Hello everyone! In this episode I have a couple of Shure antenna and power distribution units and uh, the front panels look a bit different but uh, they are both model UA845 perhaps different revisions and both don't power up there are LEDs here on the front and they just don't light up and that's all I know about them let's have a look These things are to reduce cost and clutter in uh, wireless microphone installations. Uh, such unit allows to share two good antennas across four wireless receivers. So there are two channels, A and B. Uh, because all modern wireless microphone receivers are so-called diversity receivers with two antennas to drastically reduce chances of blind spots. So there are two uh, antenna inputs and uh, four uh, outputs from each channel uh, to the wireless uh, microphone receivers and also fifth output from each channel to cascade two or more such units. And also there are four 12 volt outputs to provide power to the receivers. So we don't need uh, to have four uh, power adapters in the rack and antennas can be mounted on the front optionally and even uh, mains power can be cascaded to the second unit so only one power cord runs to the outlet and all others can uh, receive power in a chain very nice so let's take this thing apart and uh, have a look try to see what's wrong with it Here we are, two identical channels, mains input is here, then it goes to this power switch, then into the switch mode power supply, the output from the supply is here, goes to this channel, and then there is this jumper wire to the second channel, and from the second channel it goes to the LED. So if LED does not light up, that means there is no power here. So let's start checking. First uh, I would check if the fuse is fine here, then if mains power reaches uh, the power supply, and so on. Let's go! First let's check the fuse. No problem. Now let's see if we have mains power here, so I connected the cord. Let's turn this thing on. Yes, we have mains power on the input of the power supply. And now with the load disconnected, I'm checking the output. These six pins are connected in two groups of three. Three pins for positive and three pins for negative. And uh, this thing is on and there is absolutely nothing there. So let's take the power supply out and have a look at it. It was quite easy, just four screws, this ground connector, mains input connector, output connector, and a look at this insulation pad under the supply. Very nice. Here it is. Aztec LPS 43, 12 volt, 4.5 amps. I took a closer look at this power supply, looked up a few components, so let's talk about it. It seems like this video is going to be yet another switch mode power supply repair video, just like the previous one. So this power supply looks a little bit more complicated than in the previous video, but not much. Mostly it just looks that way because it is more powerful and has larger components like this massive transformer, heat sinks and such. So let's briefly go through this thing. We have this uh, massive mains capacitor, two smaller capacitors uh, to the ground from each line common mode choke, 
fuse, a uh, couple of inductors. This green thing uh, seems to be a thermistor for in rush current limiting. Then under this uh, heat sink there is a vertically standing bridge rectifier, probably hard to see. These are four pins of this bridge rectifier. Then we have this massive high voltage capacitor, 400 volt job. And then a power MOSFET on this heat sink, some power resistors for current sensing and such. And on this separate board we have main controller chip. I looked it up, it is AS3842, the same brand as the power supply. And that was it for the primary side. Here we have isolation gap and even a slot in the board. And uh, there is an optocoupler right across that slot. And not much going on on the secondary side. Uh, looks like the board supports several power rails, but only one is populated. I believe there is a voltage reference there under that white gunk. Uh, and here we have uh, in this package on the heatsink a couple of rectifier diodes, then two uh, capacitors and uh, inductor for filtering, and that's it. And this section, I'm not entirely sure what this is, it has some adjustment, uh, this connector which is not used, and this is a thyristor. So, I would think this is to control a fan or something like that, but uh, there is no fan in this unit, so I'm not even sure why this part is populated. Here we have an application node for this controller chip. Let's have a look at the typical circuit here. Mains input, filter cap, common mode choke, more filtering, bridge rectifier, high voltage electrolytic capacitor, and this resistor is for a startup. Uh, this zener is to limit the voltage. And this chip is designed for an external um, power MOSFET, which makes more sense uh, for more powerful supplies. And this MOSFET should be on a heatsink. This is a sense resistor to sense the current through this transistor. And it goes here to the sense input. This is to set oscillation frequency. Uh, this is the power rail. Uh, this is a separate winding in that transformer, which might be not quite clear from this diagram, but that's what it is. It's a separate winding to power up this chip. So it is rectified here, filtered by this cap, and this is the power rail. And this is the output from the reference uh, uh, voltage regulator in this chip. I believe this is 5 volt uh, reference. Uh, this is the feedback, and I think this is a mistake. Uh, the opto-isolated feedback should be connected to this pin. And this, they call compensation, is the output from the error amplifier. Uh, and just to have some external uh, compensation network across that op-amp inside of this chip. In this case, it's just a capacitor. And uh, on the secondary side is just a rectifier, a filter capacitor, voltage reference with some filtering on it. Uh, resistor divider to set the desired voltage and opto-isolated feedback uh, to the primary side. And this is a data sheet for this IC and look at this block diagram. Here is the error amplifier, feedback input pin 2 and uh, the other side of the op-amp is connected to this internal uh, reference 2.5 volts which is derived from the 5-volt reference regulator inside of the chip. 
and pin 1 is called compensation and this is the output from the error amplifier. So I believe this must be a mistake here, then um, this feedback input is connected to the ground and the uh, feedback from the optocoupler goes to this uh, output from the amplifier. So this should go here instead and there should be no connection to the ground. So I decided to check the power rail on this chip on the primary side just because it was the problem in the previous video and it is a sensible thing to check anyway so I soldered this uh, pair of wires for convenience hooked up my oscilloscope and have a look at this so we have 10 volts per division and it looks like this rail is 15 volts and we have 14.8 volts RMS and look at this peak to peak it's uh, more than 7 volts so there's gigantic ripple there and uh, it seems like we have another dead electrolytic capacitor and let me repeat once again that this alligator clip is connected to so-called common ground here on the primary side but it's not the same as this earth ground at all and I can do this here because this is an isolated oscilloscope don't try with this with your regular oscilloscope which is earth referenced you're gonna melt this ground lead or something else The electrolytic cap on the power rail of the chip is on this uh, separate board. There are two caps in fact uh, and I'm not sure which one is on the power rail and I will check both of course but they are hard to reach because of the heat sink here so it looks like I need to desolder this whole module first and it is not very hard to do having the right tools I have this uh, PACE SX90 desoldering iron but of course this can be done using just a regular iron and a simple manual pump like this but this thing is much more convenient here is this little board and this capacitor is on the power rail of this IC 47 microfarad capacitor let's check here we have capacitance mode ESR as the second parameter 1 kilohertz frequency and about 100 nanofarads and more than 600 ohms ESR so it must be dead and the second cap is uh, a smaller one and I don't see its value it is under this white gunk so let's check around 300 picofarads and the ESR is out of scale so it must be dead as well unless this uh, looks confusing in circuit sometimes it happens so the ultimate test is to desolder them and check again but most probably we will see the same thing I desoldered the capacitors the smaller one is 4.7 microfarads 25 volts let's check again and here we are 68 picofarads and the ESR is out of scale so this is completely dead like open circuit and uh, this 47 microfarad cap let's see 2 nanofarads and the SR is also out of scale so this looks even worse out of circuit and for comparison here I have 47 microfarads 25 volts Panasonic a new one and there you go 41 microfarad 0.67 ohms ESR so this is how it should be 
so the little board is back in place with new capacitors and have a look at this 12 volts output no problem at all so i checked other capacitors they look fine so i put the supply back into the unit and it's working So now let's look at the second one. Here is the second unit and so far the problem looks exactly the same. The fuse is fine, input is present and there is no output at all. It was exactly the same problem so I skipped all the details and the second unit is fixed as well. Thanks for watching. Bye.